everybody. Welcome to Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie. My name is Susan LaCroix, and this is my wonderful daughter, Julie. Hey, Jay. Hi, Mom. <laughs> First of all, to everybody, happy 4th of July, because tomorrow um, you'll be gathering probably with friends and family and grilling and all that other good stuff. And also, I want to say congratulations to Julie, because last week on Tuesday, she celebrated her 20th anniversary with Stampin' Up! And I made her a card and sent her some flowers. I don't even know if you have the card. Can you see it? Oh, no, I can't see it. <laughs> there you go. So I used our new little alphabet set and little punch to try to personalize it a little, a little bit just to have some fun with it. It so. was an awesome card, Mom. Thank you. And it was a busy week because you had a birthday on, on Wednesday last week, the day after my Stampin' Up! anniversary. So yeah. much to celebrate. And then oh. on Friday, we had a brand new mini catalog, the July oh. through December mini catalog launch and celebration. So, oh my gosh, there's yeah. been a lot going on since our last video. There sure has <laughs> in more ways than one. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So we are excited to be able to share some things with you. Uh, we thought what we would do this week um, is because celebrations July and August, and we have a few more months with the mini that we would focus on celebration. So that's what we've decided to do. So, uh, Julie, what am I missing here? you haven't uh, signed up for our channel, please do so. So you get a, um, a notification and you'll never miss an episode. Yes. Of <laughs> Julie. I feel like I should be saying something else. Well, I think we skipped over a lot of the normal stuff. If you're watching for the first time, mom and I are both demonstrators and mom will be celebrating her 20th anniversary later this year. Sunday Stamping is our weekly video series where we share new project ideas and we do it over Zoom. We record this special episode for you because we live two states away. Mom's in Michigan and I'm in Illinois here in the United States. And so we don't get to stamp together in person as often as we like, but Sunday Stamping is our um, our way to connect every week with Stampin' Up! and sharing projects with all of you. So it's been a year now since we've been doing Sunday Stamping. It's been so much fun and we yes, just want to give a special shout out to all of our lawyer, all of our loyal our lawyers, <laughs> <laughs> not our lawyers, our loyal viewers who, ten, who tune in every week. I can't talk. So oh, well, I just want to thank you for picking up the slack because it was like all of a sudden my brain said, <laughs> okay, you're done. Well, we're just keeping it real here. This is how we roll. We're we're very much unedited. Sometimes if we really get off track, we uh we cut a little bit, but mostly you just get you just get us. <laughs> yeah. So Jay, why don't we get started? You're going to show us what we're doing. This week, yes, right? let's flip the camera over to my desktop and we'll, we'll get started with this. I'm going to turn on that light, but it does give a little glare. Well, we are just starting with Celebration. If you're not familiar with Celebration, this is Stampin' Up's twice annual. We have this twice a year now um, promotion that has been so much fun. And I think they've been doing this for as long as I can remember, like even before we started um, as demonstrators 20 years ago. So during Celebration, you get rewarded when you shop. Um, and get Stampin' Up! products. So with a $50 order, you can choose a level one um, celebration gift. And then with a $100 order, you could get a level two celebration gift. We're not gonna go through all of the celebration options right now, but you can shop with either mom or I in our online store. We'll have links in the video description, um, sharing some of the products that we're using today. Um, if you host a party, there's a special gift for you. And if you join as a demonstrator, another special gift for you. But today, mm -hmm we just kind of wanted to focus in on two of the celebration gifts that are available for you when you purchase $50 or more. One of them is the hippest hippos <laughs> stand set. <laughs> and the other one with another $50 order is the coordinating hippo dies. Take a look at these cute samples. They're, they're adorable. And there's so many detailed dies 
that you can do so much with. Wait till you see some of these samples we're going to share with you because it's crazy. It is crazy. I feel like every year during celebration, they have a special stamp set that's cute little animals, right? We've had the sheep, yeah. we've had <laughs> the little, um, not the groundhogs, but the um, meerkats. Um, yeah. I'm trying, I'm, I'm like drawing a blank now, but we've had some cute animals. So this is just joining the lineups. The hippest hippos are just so adorable. And then like mom said, the detail on these dies are pretty incredible. I don't have them cut out, but you can kind of tell what some of them are. We've got a wavy water, flowers, umbrella, a little bathtub, a little um, lifesaver, a splash, some flowers, grass, party hat, the little boat, um, and then stamps that die cut the stamped or yeah, the, the stamp images. I have gotten some incredible swaps. So I'm gonna start by showing you some of those cards. Um, so you can see some of these um, accessories in, in action. So this first card comes from Rachel. No, nope, not Rachel Chamberlain. You've got Rachel's card. This one's from Mary McNeely. We just got our swaps back from the Impeccable Stampers group swap. And oh, they're always just so incredible. I thought this was just the cutest card from Mary. I love how she used the biggest wish stamp set to stamp birthday in three different colors and a happy. That's just such a happy card. So, so cute. Here's okay. one from, what's that? I didn't get that one in our swaps. Um, well, the way we do the swap is there is a different oh, variety. Swap. Like it's like a rolling, um, a rolling group of swaps. So some people get some, some people get others. I think we did get a lot of overlap, but there are a few that you got and I didn't. And well, I'll explain why I mentioned that comment because I used one of the same dies she did from the contour shape. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, this card is from Betsy Kreider, and she used the little umbrella to go with the ballerina. I just thought that was so cute, and I love these colors. This is a little bit of that Blackberry, not Blackberry. This is Blackberry Bliss. Design a Daydream is the designer paper with oh. those fun stripes. Um, here's one from Carol Nordquist. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? <laughs> She's I love made it sunglasses with the die cuts for the hippo on the boat with the lifesaver and the waves and you can see the detail on the die cut waves with the lines in there like um and also on the boat there are lines as well just so stinking cute here's a card from can we bring that one back again look at yeah. her sunglasses did she put like wink of stella on there yes there is a little wink of stella to make that let me take it out of plastic yeah. <laughs> to take it out of the um oh my gosh <laughs> <so> stinky, <laughs> a little wink of stella on the the die cut glasses there so the die itself let me try to bring that back in the die itself is just like glasses and so there's like an outline and then she would have cut them from the green and also from black and then placed the black pieces back in the middle of wow. the green frame. Huh. I know, Thanks. so clever. <laughs> Thank you. This one's from Kelly Atchison. I love how she stamped the hippo in the background there on the petal pink and then did a little die cut. Instead of coloring, she just stamped that on the smoky slate and die cut it. So no coloring needed there. That's my kind of card because sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes I don't like to color. <laughs> this is such a cute one from Angie Lee. She used the gingham embossing folder. And then this is another celebration gift, that designer paper that has the foil. She did a little sponging and coloring on it to add the Orchid Oasis um, color, which is the same color that she used for the Lifesaver. There. Yeah, Lifesaver, that's the right word, isn't it? Um, such a glare on with my with my extra lamp there. A little bit of this fun mesh and some sequins. I just love the way that card turned out with all the all the little details. Just so cute. This one might be one of my favorite. I'm sorry, Jay. Jay, bring that one back again. Because I couldn't figure out what that one piece is. And it's the motor for the boat. Yes. That die right there goes with the little I thought boat. maybe it was leaves. And I was trying to figure out how that would work with those flowers. <laughs> it could be leaves. You could double do that. Yeah. But I'm so glad to get swaps like this that do use all those little pieces because I honestly hadn't even thought about it or looked that closely at the dies yet. So that is what you can use it for. She's got it in basic gray and then the boat is in crumb cake. Sweet. 
This one might be one of my favorite using some silver Ooh. foil for the tub. This one's from Gwen Duckworth and she has a little bit of dimension like underneath that, um, that bucket. So it looks like it's kind of round. Um, and some of this evening evergreen window pane ribbon to look like a towel. I just thought that was just <laughs> the cutest. I know, right? Such oh. a sweet card. That I is. love it. Last one here, this one's from Ruth Bingle, and this is an easel card. So it props up on that um, little piece like that. Isn't that just the sweetest? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love these cute little hippos. Mom and I have some really fun projects to share with you. Um, so let me flip the camera over, Mom, to your desk, and you can right. check some of the swaps you've gotten and your card. All right. So I'll start with the swaps that I've gotten. So hopefully, um, let me know if that's too much glare. Oh, so that's this perfect. From Meg Lobin. And she, I think I figured out what this was. I think it's supposed to be like a stage. Like oh, she's yes. So you're always on point. And then this one, I love this one too. This one is from Mel Lambert. And she is, um, she used again quite a bit. Oh, look, she used it in his leaves. That little motor that you can. Oh, you I think that's the grass dye. Oh, is it? Okay. There's there, a grass ball. <laughs> yeah, I used it on my card. That's why I know. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And the umbrella and the little heart. And I think she even put like little eyelashes. This is funny. Oh, so cute. so cute. And this one, hey, you really are the best. This one is from Rachel Chamberlain. And I love her colors. The fir flirty flamingo. And I don't know if that's orchid opulence or if that's starry. Sorry. Orchid oasis. Anyway. And this hay is from the other, there's a, another stamp set in celebration offerings. And I think that's where she got this. Amazing phrasing. Amazing. I think that's such a great combination. And I love those colors too, mom. Beautiful, just beautiful. And this is what I'm going to show you. So, oh, oh, it did. I forgot to twist it. This is a spinner card. And I'm going to show you how to make this so that when you um when you're the recipient opens it bam well it didn't flip but it does flip and i'll show you when i make it to test it out but anyway yes so this is what i'm going to show you this afternoon all right so i want to start with um bringing out the celebration brochure again get my mouse out of the way because i decided you can use whatever kind of card base that you like but um i really wanted to try to incorporate um, an, another celebration product. And that is this pool party in soft sea foam cards and envelopes. They're designed to go to coordinate with a splendid day suite from the uh, mini catalog, but you can use them whatever, however you want. So I thought I would bring those up. So let me, I'm so this, glad you're using those because I haven't had a chance to make a card with them yet. And I just love the colors. Like, yeah, yeah. All right. So I am going to just tell you, you know, some of the components here. So if you don't use a, a pre-printed card like I am today, um, your card base is going to be eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then I took a piece of pool party because this is pool party. And I cut a piece of five inches by four and a quarter. And then I used the contour shapes. And this is why I was asking you about that card because I thought, oh, oh. <laughs> to lend itself to this project so mm -hmm. really those are the only two um pieces that i have so really quick and simple i did use some scraps for my um layering circles so let's do this all right so what i did i was trying to because i really want to focus on the assembly of this card so i after i die cut my pool party piece and um, I laid this on top of here and you want to just kind of center it and I will be honest I just eyeballed it and then I put one of the layering circles on here and ran it through the uh, die cut and embossing machine so that you have them um, you have it this will line up is what I'm trying to say <laughs> not very well I might add this is going to be a rough day I can tell right now oh you're doing great all right, so uh, I'm going to fold this guy in half. Now there's a couple different ways you can do a spinner card. Um, I even, I actually, I tried. I was working on one that I, what I wanted to do is have something different on the front and open it up and have kind of a 
surprise spinner card with some oh. cards. However, um, the the mechanics didn't work out because I think these are just a little bit too big. Hmm. So it kept bumping into the back of the card. So I put that one away and started over. All right. So you you're going to want um, two of well in this case hippos. You want them to be exactly the same because we're going to adhere them back to back. Now, if you were using a shape such as a heart or a butterfly that was com completely symmetrical, you don't even need to put them on a circle. You could just use them back to back. But because the hippos really aren't symmetrical, mm -hmm. you can't do that. So I put them on the circles. Okay, any questions so far? No, nope, looking good. All right, so we're going to use this. Um, all right, wait a minute, where's my, here it is. We're gonna use some Baker's twine. I would highly recommend you use like fishing line, but I did, I don't have any. So I brought out, you can use thread. I'm just using the white embossing, um, not embossing, the white Baker's twine. And my advice to you would be to kind of match the background. So mm -hmm. since this is white, the white Baker's twine will be fine because you're really not gonna see it. Yeah. But if this were say, a pink background, you might want to dye the thread pink. So just, just a thought. Good. All right. So I'm going to just cut off a hunk of this. And I probably cut off too much, but that's all right. All right, so I'm going to flip my guys over and I am going to find my tear and tape. I had it here. There it is. Buried. All right, let's unbury it. I also, by the way, um, die cut some of the flowers and put them on glue dots to get that ready. And I have my grading. Okay. I just feel so discombobulated today that, ah. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of my tear and tape and I'm going to take my and i'll be trimming off a lot of this baker's try so i want to really kind of put this in the center of my circle and i have way too much of this so let me just tear that in half and i want to kind of hold it taut and you some people use scotch tape i figure we've got tear and tape so it works for me all right so once we have that on we can take some more tear and tape and I'm going to put it on this guy because we're going to put these two together. Did you use the layering circle dies to die cut the hippos? I did. I did. I did. I thought I wrote that down, but maybe I didn't. I, I used the layering circles for all the circles for the card as well as this. All right. Now I want to put my two circles together and you want to kind of make sure that they are, you, that you have them where you want them. So our little ballerina is on point. So I wanted to make sure her, her little foot was down. So then we're going to line up the, um, am I in camera? Okay. Yeah. You want to line up the scallops. So once you get this down, it's down. And so you don't want them offset because that will defeat the purpose of what you're looking for here. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we have this piece done. So as it spins, and we're gonna put this now on the back of this so that it spins. And so you, again, you wanna line this up I look like it might be off a little bit. You want to line this up on um, in the center of the your pool party piece. So I want to make sure I didn't measure any of this. I suppose if you wanted to be real exact, you could. So I just want to make sure that I'm I'm going for the center of that one little scallop there. We'll take some more of our tear and tape to anchor that down. So I'll start at the top. I'm gonna 
hug there. And if I stretch it, I need like a third hand here. <laughs> So now that we have that on there, I obviously have way, 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 way too much of this baker's twine. I tend to, when I'm making these, I tend to not cut myself enough. Yeah. So then I have to cut more. So it's like, well, here we go. All right. So we have that piece done, which is going to go on the front of our card here. So I'm going to use some more tear and tape. I remember when we first saw the celebration brochure, immediately you were like, I'm going to make a spinner card <laughs> with that hippo. It's yeah. so cute. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I'm going to just try to avoid that other stuff. And this is going to maybe seem kind of weird, but I really want it to stay. So I'm going to put some over here and some over here. I'll try to avoid this so I don't inadvertently peel that off. But let's see how it goes. Maybe I'll put some on there because I think it needs it. All right. All right, so I want to take this off. And I want to take this off. Yep, that worked. You just really want this to stay down. Okay. Now we're going to line that back up with this. You know, I should stamp my green, shouldn't I? Too late. I have to do it on the card. <laughs> oh, right. it'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so let's do a test run. Spin her around. So that when we open it, bam, there it goes. Oh, so fun. So let me get out some black memento ink and stamp my greeting, which is, you are always on point. This just, I use this stamp actually to make uh, my great niece's birthday card because she takes ballet. So, we can't always get to her recitals, but they bring the DVD over and let us see it. A little crooked, but it'll work. And oh, then let's put some flowers on here. So we're gonna put one here. One up here. And another guy up here. Hmm, no, I don't like this. Down. That's a little better. And then, of course, I have to add blame. Of course. <laughs> so I just grabbed some of our um, basic rhinestones because I wanted something really little. Yeah. And pop these bad boys in here. I think on Eloisa's, I also um, put... In each of those scallops, I put uh, a rhinestone. So Aww. Um, on her tutu. Well, I actually looked up the colors of hippos, and they're kind of a brownish gray with kind of a pink underbelly. So, yeah. Absolutely they're adorable. You know, I wasn't even thinking about that being the belly, and I was just thinking about um, that, you know, sort of the leotard. Yeah. Pink. pink. But um, I guess it is the hippo's belly. So cute, mom. Yeah, yeah thank you. Are you ready? I'm uh, sure. Good. Yeah, let's flip it back over to me. All right. And um, 
There's that nasty glare again. Well, I'm using um, the stamp set as well, as well as some of the detail dies. I've got the flowers and the grass, but I'm also using a couple other die sets and I just wanted to bring them in and show you really quick. One of them is the new stylish shape dies and I use the square to die cut um, a piece for my card. And then the other one I used is this, what is this called? The scallop? Hold on, it's all covered up. The cracker and treat box. This Ooh. is what this is what this looks like all put together. Um, but the reason I'm using this one, check this out. All the other dies that come oh my with that cracker treat box. The little oval. So uh, you got some tags, and then these are the ones that really interested me because they look like some of our old favorite punches, the word window punch, the classic mm. label punch. And so I have been very eager to use those um, dies to create a card um, that I used to make with the classic label punch. So I am going to show you how to make the peekaboo flip oh, card, love it. <laughs> which utilizes um, this die from this cracker treat box die set. So nice. let's start. Let me show you all the pieces that we're going to use. We're starting with a card base. I'm using um, mint macaron, um, and this is just five and a half by eight and a half. And then um, I'm using flirty flamingo cardstock. This piece of cardstock is three and a half inches by four and a quarter. We'll have all the measurements in the video description for you. Um, with this piece, you're going to want to die cut first. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to show you where I die cut on this. I sort of did um, in the top center and a little closer to the right side. So it's just like a little right of center. Um, okay. After you die cut it, then you can use that um, posy embossing folder to add a little texture. Since I've got flowers on this card, I thought that would be kind of a, um, just a, a fun little background. So I'm using that piece and I'm also going to use a piece that came out, which is another reason you want to cut it before you emboss it because you want that to be plain. Um, some more pieces here, we've got um, a tag that is two inches by six inches. And I've scored at one and three quarters and two and a quarter. You can see those score lines there. Um, I have a piece to layer our square on. This is two and five eighths inch by two and five eighths inch. And then I die cut the piece of white to layer on top. And I already did the stamping with the hippo and I die cut the hippo and um, also die cut some grass. So that's going to go on the square. If you were doing um, just a regular white square without the, the stitched edge that's die cut, you could do a two and three eighths inch by two and three eighths inch um, piece of white. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to need a white piece that is one and a half by one and three quarter inch. And this is for sort of the inside of that, that peekaboo flip. Okay. Um, some additional pieces that I have, the um, some die cut flowers that I mentioned, those come in a, a pair. So I just die cut it one time to um, have on our card. So let's talk about assembly for this card because that really is sort of the, the tricky part that needs a little more explanation. Um, we've got this, um, this long tag here and on my original card design, when I first made this a few years ago, I used the tag topper punch. I just love that punch and I really miss it. Um, I'm going to use the label me lovely punch. Can you see that shape? Gosh, it's just so, so bright. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, you can cut, you know, what shape I'm using. Um, I'm going to take that long end and kind of feed it through just to give a little tag kind of edge to the long end of that basic gray tag. And then I don't think this is current anymore, but you can use any hole punch that you have. I'm just going to add a little hole right there in um, the end of a tag. Uh, and actually, um, you can use this tie or this hole from the Label Me Fancy Punch. Gosh, it's just a terrible glare today. 
you know which one I'm talking about, right? Anyway, you're gonna put a hole there to make a tag. Um, all right, and then on this piece, um, we're gonna do a little stamping. So I got basic gray for my sentiments and the inside one is gonna say, aw, you really are the best. That's in basic gray. And then I'm going to glue that down onto that space at the end of the tag. So I have this, the groove of the score line is up and this is going on the end of that. Um, this is where I'm gonna add my, um, stuff all over the place, my flowers. And I'm gonna do that with blue dots. I'm just gonna stick those on, um, stick those on the glue dots. Oh my goodness, get on there and pull them off. Okay, next up, we are going to add our front piece. So first thing we're gonna just layer these squares together. And we're gonna use tear and tape. I guess tear and tape is our, um, our featured product today. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would seem so. Oh, we, we always do that. We don't talk about it. And then we end up showing kind of a kind of yeah. the same thing. So I'm using tear and tape on that little strip in the in the middle. And then this piece is going to line up right in front of the score line. And I'm just centering kind of top to bottom. So right inside that score line. And um, so then you've got kind of, this was the long tag. And then this is just sort of covering that little piece. The next place the tear and tape is going to go is the end of the long tag. So you can see this is the tag and that is at the end of the tag. And so my next piece of tear and tape is going to go right there, only on the edge of that long tag. Follow me so far? So far. Excellent. You're going to take your um, cardstock that's embossed with the slot and you're going to feed the, the tag through the slot so that it comes through from the back. And now this piece is going to end up gluing to the pink cardstock here. But we want to center our, um, our hippo kind of wow. in that in that space provided. So we'll go ahead and take the tear and tape off. And then kind of sort of coming back to me. Yeah, I'm kind of holding this for right now. Um, and not gluing it down yet as I'm centering that hippo in the space. And then when I kind of have it where I want it to go, then I'm going to um, let go and push down and I can just sort of put my finger in there and it's this piece that is gluing down to the inside of the card this end okay? okay so now when you pull on this the tag it flips that open nice 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 we're almost done I'm making this card look so easy <laughs> it's really not that hard next thing we're going to do is glue the pink piece to the card base so you just want to avoid this space where that tag has to move so I'm going to put tear and tape at the top and the bottom you could also put it on the side or you know here if you want to just not interrupting the tag part at all I love the tear and tape just because it's so easy to use and it's such a strong adhesive for a card like this that has layers and movements. Um, the tear and tape, I think, is definitely the way to go. You could also it use that so easy by just pulling it off and I have trouble just tearing it off. Oh, that's why it's called tear and tape, because you can hear it. But um, some people do have problems, so you could use a pair of scissors. Do you usually cut yours with scissors or do you tear? Depends. If it won't tear, I use scissors. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it just depends on my arthritis <laughs> that day. Yeah, I always joke that um, this, this tape is so terrible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stick Sorry. this on um, toward the left side, maybe about a half inch or so from the side. Um, I just like having having it be a little off center there. Plus there's room for the tag now to move. 
We're almost done. We're going to stamp on that. Oh my gosh, I almost got ink on myself. <laughs> We're going to stamp on that pink tag that we had. And this says, love you a ton. Oh, I thought that was gonna be off center. Um, I'm going to use the scissors now to cut it apart. And I'm cutting really close. To, I've got a hair. Come on, get out of there. Um, really close to the ton because we're going to cut in between love you and a ton. And that is just, it's really tight. So I want to be tight on the ends as well. So I've got two pieces that say love you a ton. And we're going to use the glue dots to add those to the card. I wanted to kind of have them be a little like crooked and a little off center yeah. to make them fit. I always think your card is naked without words on the front. So I had, I had to put something. <laughs> nice. I love it. One last little thing. I added a little bit of ribbon and tied a bow in that tag. I'm just going to bring in my finished one so you can see what that oh. looks like. You can either make a bow or just like a pull. And then I think it signals them to to pull that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Julie. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just realized I forgot to put something on the inside. So I'm going to have to go back and do some stamping and add some fun die cutting, maybe a little bit of that embossed paper or something to dress up the inside a little bit more because it needs something to make it so special because the front, the front is so dressed up. I got to do something on the inside. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's flip the camera around and we can show off our projects together. All right. Oh my goodness, these hippos are oh, just the cutest. They are adorable. <laughs> I love it. I think, I mean, you know, not to brag or anything, but I think we knocked it out of the park. I think these hippos <laughs> are so adorable and we nailed it with these cute cards if you agree make sure to give this video a thumbs up and oh, let us do. know in the comments yeah yeah this was so much fun jay i was trying to think about which celebration gift is my favorite and i honestly haven't really had a chance to play with them a whole lot yet so i'm not sure but the hippos i think are going to be right up there I think so. The other one that I really, really like, and we got a lot of swaps with this one as well. And that was, I think I can find it, the Wonderful World stamp set. Yes, that's the, the level two one with a hundred dollar order. It comes with designer paper and a stamp set. I think we're definitely going to have to feature that one in an upcoming video. We are, because yeah, we have a <laughs> to share with you in addition to what we come up with so yes we we'd love to know what you would like to see so if there's something else in the celebration brochure or in the july through december 2022 mini catalog leave a comment and let us know what suites or stamp sets or designer paper you would like more inspiration for yeah we would be happy we would be happy to stamp <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes it's kind of a fun challenge i love uh i love stretching myself and coming up with with things, especially product that maybe I wouldn't normally use. It's sort of a fun little challenge to come up with a card. Now, see, and I, I probably would not have ordered the hippos. If that was the, if that stamp set and die were in the mini camera, mm. I don't know that I would have ordered it, but because of free. <laughs> I know, right? Free is always good. <laughs> I, I think I might have, I have a thing for cute little critters. So I think this is one that I, I might've picked out because these hippos are pretty, pretty cute. And the, yeah. the little accessory dies, especially are just so, they're so different and so detailed. And I feel like it really adds a lot of like images and possibilities with the stamp set. It really just amplifies the stamp set and makes it so, so fun to work with. Those sunglasses. I know. That safe show <laughs> with the sunglasses. Oh my gosh. I have to do something with those. I don't know what yet. Oh uh, but... well, celebration is July and August of 2022. You can get the hippo stamp set for free with a $50 order. And the hippo dies free with a $50 order. So you can get them both with a hundred dollar order. And you just want to make sure you get your order in before August 31st, 2022. Now, mom, I don't remember um hearing one way or the other, but are these like the dies especially, are they limited like while supplies last? 
Well, Sometimes I think all of the celebration uh, items are while supplies last. I don't, so I don't know. I haven't heard anything yet. And I did not check the, the um, inventory list before we started filming. So I'm oh, not sure. I don't, I don't think we're at risk for them uh, <laughs> selling out that quickly, but it is possible, uh, especially the dyes, like Stampin' Up! manufactures the stamp sets, but the dyes, um, is what I would worry about. So if yes. you have to choose, dyes before, yes, yes. If you have to choose one or the other, start with the dies and get the stamp set later, just to make sure that you don't miss out on those. So I do want to point out, Julie, an extremely, extremely small <laughs> print at the bottom of the back. It says supplies are limited and may run out before the promotion ends. Yep. So, so there it is. That being said, you definitely want to start when you're trying to decide and, and prioritize your celebration gift choices. Definitely yes. you want to pick dyes first. Um, and then after that, I would say, you know, like the... Um, the cards and envelopes or the designer paper, yep. especially the paper that has foil in it, um, yes. because those are the ones that are most likely to sell out first. And then the stamp sets, uh, Stampin' Up! does produce. And so I, I feel pretty solid that those are going to be available until, if not the very, very end, like pretty, close. pretty close to the very end. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely make sure to get those hippo dies early. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, everybody, you have a wonderful 4th of July, and we will see you next Sunday stamping with Susan and Julie. Have Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye Jay. Love you, too.